So this afternoon I was filming another sunset from Cable Beach in Australia and decided to see how long it takes from the moment the sun first touches the water until the top of the sun disappears completely. And by measuring the amount of time taken for this to occur, we can confirm if the real observation matches the heliocentric theory that the sun is moving across the sky at 15 degrees per hour. So let's take a look at some numbers and see if we can calculate accurately how long it should take for the sun to disappear fully from the time it first touches the water. Now we know that the size of the sun is 32 arc minutes. If we go through some mathematics, looking at the motion of the sun, we are told that the sun moves 15 degrees per hour which makes sense because that is 360 degrees in 24 hours and that is easily verifiable. And that equates to one degree every four minutes. The sun has an angular size of 32 arc minutes and therefore it moves a distance across the sky equal to its own size every two minutes and eight seconds. And the calculation for that is here, 32 divided by 60 times 4 minutes gives us 2 minutes and 8 seconds. However, even though the sun is moving across the sky at the rate of 1 degree every 4 minutes, that does not mean it is descending vertically at 1 degree every 4 minutes. Broom is 18 degrees south latitude, and if you recall, the app I showed you yesterday demonstrates the angle of the path of the sun matches the latitude. The angle away from vertical matches the latitude and therefore even though the sun is moving at one degree every four minutes the motion directly down is not at the same rate. It is actually the cosine of the latitude. So if we look at the cosine of 18 degrees it gives us 0 0.951. So rather than moving at one degree every four minutes, it is actually moving down at 0 0.951 of a degree every four minutes. So that means it will take slightly longer than two minutes and eight seconds for the sun to disappear fully. Let's go through those numbers again. Broom is 18 degrees south latitude. The vertical motion of the sun is therefore one degree per four minutes times the cosine of 18. And the cosine of 18 is 0 0.95. So that is how many degrees we move in four minutes. 0 0.95 of a degree gives us 57 arc minutes. The angular size of the sun, 32 arc minutes, divided by 57 times four minutes is now giving us 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So that is the amount of time it should take from when the sun first reaches the water until the top of the sun disappears completely. So let's see how close it is. So this is the raw footage from the P900 camera today and I've got the time slider at 30 seconds because that is where I see the water just start to appear at the bottom of the sun. You can see how it's starting to flatten out. So if we were to take two minutes and 15 seconds into this video from the 30 second portion, that is going to give us a timestamp of two minutes and 45 seconds when the sun should disappear. So let's take a look at how close it is. You can see that the sun is setting I zoom in and out a couple of times, and we'll talk about that later. But now you can see the sun is continuing to set, it's disappearing. And remember, we're looking for 2 minutes and 45 seconds. There's 2 minutes 30 seconds, the sun is still visible. There's 2 minutes 40 seconds, the top of the sun is still just visible. 43 seconds, 2 minutes 44, 2 minutes 45, and 2 minutes 46 and 47, it's gone. 
So the amount of time between the sun first reaching the water and disappearing completely matches our 2 minutes 15 seconds perfectly. So the real world observation matches the heliocentric theory perfectly. 15 degrees per hour, 1 degree every 4 minutes, adjusted for the 18 degrees of latitude in Broome, giving us 2 minutes 15 seconds for the sun to disappear from the moment it touches the water. That is exactly what we see in our actual observation. So let's see how the flat earthers explain this with perspective. And don't just talk about it. Show us and give us your calculations, please. Because I've just done that using the globe. If you're trying to tell people the earth is flat, show us your flat earth calculations that explain the real world observation. So I'll play the actual footage from the P900 now and because it's part of a longer video, the timestamp is going to be different obviously, but you can still test yourself that the amount of time taken for the sun to disappear from when it first touches the water is two minutes and 15 seconds. You can verify that yourself. And also the reason I was zooming in and out was to prove that zooming in on the sun does not bring it back. So I chalk this one up as another very easy win for the globe. So when the sun disappears, zoomed out, let's see if we can bring it back by zooming in. And it's gone. It's totally gone guys, your zooming in theory doesn't work.